Hello, my name is Holly Martin and I am a social studies teacher here at Cacalico. So let's get started with some back to school night information. First up, um, I teach two classes here this year. I teach American Studies and Psychology. And you can see my contact information there, Holly Martin um, at, so it's hmartin at cacalico.org. So if you have any questions or want to contact me, feel free to email me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, this is my first year at Cacalico High School. Uh, I've taught, this is my fourth year teaching, um, so I've done a number of long-term sub-jobs at school districts around the area. Two of my long-term sub-jobs have actually been at Cacalico Middle School, um, but this is the first year that I am at the high school, so I'm very excited to be here and have to, your student in class. So briefly, here's a little bit about me. Um, so I have a one-year-old border collie named Kenya. It's very cute. She likes to go to the park. She likes to go on walks and play fetch. Um, I'm the oldest of six kids. So my youngest two sisters are actually um, seniors in high school this year. Um, and then the rest of us uh, are out of high school and or in college. Um, I like to bake and travel in my free time. So uh, Unfortunately, didn't get to do a lot of traveling this summer due to the coronavirus, but I did get to do a lot of baking um, during the spring and summer. So those are some things that I like to do when I am not in school. So education. Um, so I graduated from Garden Spot High School in 2013. Then I went to Grove City College in Western Pennsylvania, where I graduated in 2017 um, with a bachelor's degree in history and a concentration in social studies education. So in American Studies this year, uh, we're looking at approximately 19, the year 1900 to the present um, in American history. Um, and I'm very excited to get to teach American Studies because this is actually my favorite time in American history from the 1900s to the present. So we're going to look at the Progressive Era. We're going to look at American imperialism, World War I, um, boom to bust, so that's the Roaring Twenties and the Great Depression, um, World War II, the Cold War, social changes in the 50s and the 60s. We're going to look at the 70s and the 80s, and then um, modern America, so from the 80s to the present, or as close to the present as we can get, right? So I'm very excited about this content, um, so I hope the kids will have a lot of fun learning about the uh, history of the United States. So here are some of my expectations in class. So I have five main class expectations that I think pretty much cover all of the things that, all of the rules and expectations that you should have in a classroom. So um, be respectful. Be attentive, be responsible, be on time, and be prepared. So first one is be respectful. So I always tell the kids um, being respectful um, involves being respectful to everything and everyone in the classroom. So that includes the teacher, that includes your classmates, includes yourself, um, as well as the school property and the school policies. I expect the students to be attentive in class, so that includes both when they're in person and when they're at home. Um, I know that it is much harder to pay attention at home when there's lots of other things to distract you, and um, I find it hard to pay attention um, at home as when um, more than when I'm sitting in front of people. But I told the kids, just do your best, pay attention to the activities that you're doing when you're at home, um, and try to participate both in class when you're in person and when you're at home virtually. So I try to do a number of um, things that the students have to interact with and reply to when they're at home um, to try to keep them involved and attentive to those activities. Uh, the next one is be responsible. So students are responsible for their own actions. They're responsible to follow all the school rules. Um, they're responsible for doing their best work and keeping up with their assignments, as well as checking in and doing work from home. So that's a big one for this year, um, being responsible to work at home. So as we all adjust to this new virtual, half virtual, half in-person um, reality of the school year this year. 
The next one, be on time. This one's also more important this year than it is in other years. So they are responsible to come to class and check in from home on time. So checking in at home is very important. Make sure to do so promptly. Um, I have to submit attendance in the first 10 minutes of class. So there is always a an attendance activity for the students to do when they log on to Schoology. Um, so it's very important that they log in promptly at the start of class in order to um, be counted as present in the attendance. Um, so as we start to move into some more live streaming options at the beginning of class, um, it's going to be even more important to log in, do the attendance activity so we can get started. Because um, if you show up, you know, five or ten minutes into class, you've already missed that introduction act, those introductions, um, and um, it's, missing, it's missing class time that you can't um, really make up afterwards. The next one is be prepared. So come to class ready to learn, whether that's coming to class online or coming to class in person. Bring any required materials that they need. Um, make sure the computer is charged so when they or in person, it's very important to have your computer charged because we do use our computers a lot this year. Um, and it's their responsibility to be prepared for any tests and quizzes and upcoming assignments. So here's some information about grading in this class. So American Studies is a required class for graduation. So if uh, students do not pass this class, they will have to take it again. Um, so it is very important to make sure that they are turning in activity, turning in their assignments and studying for assessments um, in order to pass the class. So the final grade is based on three things. 40% um, comes from the first marking period grade, 40% from second marking period grade, and then 20% from the final project and exam. So that's 10% for the project and 10% for the exam. Each of the marking period grades, those 40% comes from the following. So 75% of their grade for each marking period comes from assessments and major assignments. So those are things like tests, quizzes, projects, writing assignments, etc. So this year especially, I've um, been focusing more on doing end of the unit projects rather than end of the unit tests um, because of the way that the year has been set up um, with the hybrid. I find that easier and um, a better test of the student's knowledge and uh, of the material. So there will still be some tests and quizzes, but I'm emphasizing a lot more projects this year. So those kinds of activities are 75% of the student's grades. So if those do not get turned in, they will not pass the class. 20% of the grade comes from classwork and participation activities, and then 5% of the grade from homework. So note that students should be keeping all of their notes in classwork in order to study for the final exam, which will cover all of the things that we have talked about in class. So from the Progressive Era, 1900, all the way up to the present. Here's my late work policy. So major assignments, those projects, writing assignments, things like that, they are due at 11.59 on the day that is due. Um, you lose about 2% per day that it is late, and I do not accept any major assignments after 14 school days. So after 14 school days are over, they have run out of time to turn that in. Um, classwork, um, I give them a two-day grace period, so you don't lose any points in those first two days. After two days, you leave, lose 5% per day, up to 50% off. I do not accept um, any classwork after the end of the unit, uh, either the unit test or unit project, whenever the end of the unit is. So same with the homework. It's not accepted after the end of the unit. However, um, if you turn in homework late, it's automatically half credit. I do have a resubmission policy. So tests, all tests and quizzes can be retaken at one time each, um, and I will give whatever higher grade is between the two. Um, so you can make back some points that way. Or instead of doing a retest, you can complete test corrections for test. Um, that will help you gain back some of the points as well. Um, major assignments can all be revised and resubmitted one time. So you can resubmit those at any time. But 
So once it's been submitted, if it, you don't like the grade that you've gotten, you can resubmit it and I will regrade it and you can get some of the points back um, from that as well. So what can you do as a parent to help your child? So um, the biggest thing you can do is encourage your student to participate um, when they're online and in class. Um, urge them to advocate for themselves, which is a great life skill to have. Um, they can contact me with any questions that they need have, or if they need any help or don't understand something, I would love to answer their questions and help them out, but I can't do that if they never ask the question. Um, remind students to turn in things on time. Uh, this, I think, is the most important one. Ask them about what they're learning in class and have them teach you about it. So one of the best ways to um, show that you've learned something and understand it is to teach it to someone else. So having them um, explain to you what they've been learning in class helps to cement it in their brain as well as um, shows that you're interested in what they're learning and doing at school and it makes a great dinner time conversation. So you've got uh, a good reason to do that. Ask them about what they're learning. Um, you can also check PowerSchool for any missing work um, or Schoology for any upcoming assignments. And if you have any other questions or any concerns, please feel free to contact me at any time. Have a good night.